All right, so state of the EV industry. This is a quick rundown. We have some tremendous presentations coming, so I'm not going to get into a lot of detail. But yeah, the EV industry today, we have basically medium range or low range, depending on how critical you are, EVs uh, and plug-in hybrids. Uh, so, you know, 100, 100 uh, miles max or 150 kilometers max uh, driving range, which is still excellent for most people's uh, 90 percent of days. We don't travel more than 40 miles in the US and the US drives like twice as much as the British. So I assume here in Europe, these cars are really adequate for 95% of days or so. Uh, but still, when you want to take a road trip in your car, they don't quite work. If people are just learning about EVs and they don't understand all the benefits, they're turned off by the idea. So this is a story today. We have early adopters getting these medium range uh, electric cars. And we have Tesla, which has long-range electric vehicles, which are, of course, expensive, uh, but much, much higher quality and also long-range, quicker. Uh, that's today. Tomorrow, the story is going to change very quickly. Uh, we have just announced, here's our picture, here are two of our pictures from the Tesla Model 3 unveiling in Los Angeles last week. Uh, this is a 215-mile minimum car, $35,000, that's the median. Like median price of average price of a new car in the United States, so it's an average price car with 215 miles, which is enough for most driving. It's going to be quicker than anything in that price category. It's going to have cooler autonomous technology. It's going to blow the market away. We just saw 325,000 reservations in one week. So range is one thing. Another critical piece. I think this might be the most critical differentiator. Differentiator other than brand. Um, you have different levels of charging. Technically, there's level one charging, level two charging, level three charging. Uh, level three charging is DC fast charging. Uh, if you get a, an i3, you can plug it into a CCS uh, charger, and you can charge like 75. This is sorry, this is created for a Florida audience. Uh, 75 to 100 miles uh, in 30 minutes. Tesla's superchargers charge the car in 100, 170 miles. So basically, twice as fast as all the other fast chargers on the market. On a long range trip, you need to drive for a couple hours, two to three hours, and then charge for like half an hour. With these, what, you're gonna drive for two hours and charge for an hour, drive for two hours, charge for an hour. You can do it, but no, no normal you know, average person is gonna do it. So you have this huge gap where Tesla's offering what's practical and nobody else has it on the market. Europe has approved uh, 150 kilowatt charging, which is uh, comparable, but we have no indication that anyone's going to build a network. We have all the automakers signed on, but we don't have any, any public plans for building a network. So this is a humongous gap between Tesla and the rest of the automakers, and the longer they wait to either build their network or to partner with Tesla, Elon Musk has announced two years ago or so, that they would open the Tesla supercharger network to other automakers, so they just have to pay their fair share and build the cars so that they're compatible with it. They're not doing so still. It's really, uh, the longer they wait, the more they're going to have their, their lunch eaten. Of course, the supercharger network is getting pretty big. This was 2015. At the end of this year in the US, it'll be this big. In Europe, it's like this today. So you can drive across much of Europe with Tesla superchargers. Uh, 2016, it'll finally come to Poland, uh, right outside my city, uh, and a lot of other places. So, I mean, this is just anyone who follows EVs and understands the options. This is a this is like this is a deal breaker if you don't have Tesla supercharging or level four charging that doesn't exist. Uh, so, we did a survey of a thousand or so, over a thousand uh, potential EV drivers and 65% were significantly or much more attracted to an EV that had Tesla superchargers or comparable super fast charging. Only 10.5% of respondents didn't care. So we have the Chevy Bolt coming out with 200 miles of range at the end of this year, but it doesn't have super fast charging. Uh, so, people, so we have 325,000 people who have put down reservations for a Tesla Model 3 that comes out a year later. 
uh, the, the industry needs to wake up. It needs to do something with super fast charging or else it's going to just keep getting further and further behind. The benefits of EVs, the more, the more fun driving, the safer driving, the faster uh, convenient benefit of charging at home. Uh, if you don't take into those accounts, those things into account, then this is where uh, electric cars become competitive with, uh, with normal cars. So basically, if the battery cost is 150 kilowatt hour, $150 a kilowatt hour, and the price of gas is $2 a gallon. This is getting comparable. Um, I know in Europe it's obviously higher. Uh, battery costs are coming down. Uh, battery costs are coming down much faster than anyone uh, basically anticipated. Here were projections for 2020, 2025, and here were prices from Nissan and Tesla a couple years ago. So battery prices have been coming down a lot faster. This Chevy Bolt, it, it's uh, got really low uh, battery prices already from LG Chem. Uh, if, you, if you make estimates for the battery pack, because that was just the cell cost, and I had to add in battery pack uh, other prices. So that puts the Chevy Bolt competitive with a, a gas car like it at $2.50 or $3 a gallon, which is what we were at a couple years ago before this oil uh, crisis, as I would call it. Um, it's probably what you're at here in, in Europe, at least. Uh, an analyst uh, looking at Tesla's battery pack put the put with the Gigafactory online estimated that it'll be 130 dollars a kilowatt hour. So his estimate is down here. Other more conservative estimates are up here, which are probably less likely. Current EV drivers they even more heavily swayed toward Teslas, probably because they have experience with EVs and they realize the benefits of, of longer range supercharging. So Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model X, Tesla Model S. Uh, obviously, we have a very lopsided <coughs> industry right now. Uh, just asking what cars people are most excited about, again, is Tesla's at the top. Um, in the end, I think diversity will rule again. We will have more options than just Tesla. Uh, and one key gap here, I think, is that we don't all need 215 miles for all of our cars. I think if we have two cars in family, you can definitely have a lower range car, assuming it's going to cost less, of course, which it should. Uh, so we, we found similarly uh, that, that potential buyers were interested in lower ranges if it meant lower prices. Uh, and there's nobody, right now there's no cars between 107 miles of range and like 220 miles of range. So this is a big gap in the market where there's nothing available. So I think automakers need to fill that gap. Uh, similar here, potential drivers, current drivers. Uh, again, another important question I thought was uh, if automakers would let people upgrade their batteries after a few years. So if you buy a Nissan Leaf, and it has short range, and a few years later, battery tech has improved a lot, you should have the option to get a new battery and put it in your car, right? You still pay for it. Uh, right now, only Tesla offers that option, again. So only they will let you upgrade your battery. Um, and this was another thing that 60, 70% of respondents thought was very important. So again, I, I don't really know, I don't wanna, we'll talk about it more later, but I feel like the auto industry is still trying to slow or delay this, this transition, or they're just not putting full effort behind it, so they're not really saying, oh, we really need to connect the dots. Positive news, we saw Daimler announce that all of their, head, all of their executives have to drive EVs. Uh, so I think that's a good sign that they're trying to get people to have a better full picture of what's needed. Uh, Victor is gonna talk about this, so I'll leave this, but I mean, basically, early adoption, uh, I mean, the adoption curve shows that uh, disruptive technology grows rather slowly at the beginning, but then once the technology is ripe, once it's uh, cost competitive and better, it shoots through the roof. And I think we're on the verge of seeing that with electric vehicles because they are much better vehicles. Most people don't know this because most people haven't driven them. Uh, but uh, cost is just getting to the competitive point. The Tesla Model 3, of course, is here. Uh, this is, we, we spent two hours, it's just my, my writer and I, two hours on the test track of the Tesla Model 3, only us and some Tesla staff. So we had a lot of fun. This car looks a lot better in person, I will say. And I think uh, right now, BMW, Mercedes, GM boardrooms are looking like this. Uh, 
They just they haven't they haven't put the effort in, so they are way behind. And we have this great quote that Tesla CTO J.B. Straubel often ends with: "The Stone Age came to an end not for lack of stones, and the Oil Age will come to an end not for lack of oil." This is a former Saudi oil minister. I think he saw pretty clearly what was what was coming. So we've got uh, next up, Jose and Victor are going to do a deep dive on EV sales history.